Okay, so let's take a second here to summarize what you just learned about vertical stretches. Keep in mind that when we say a vertical stretch, it's, it's like we're taking, um, think of a piece of a chewed up gum, right? I, 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 I spit a piece of chewed up gum and I stretch the chewed out gum vertically. Well, what happens to the gum? The gum is going to get thinner and thinner and thinner. So you're going to see that when we talk about these vertical stretches. <clears throat> so here's a graph uh, f of x which is just some, some function that we have. And let's say I want to stretch this function vertically. And the vertical stretch that I want to do looks like this blue graph here. Well, since the vertical stretch, think about it as being a multiplier on the y-axis, I have to look and see, well, how much is each point stretching by? Well, I notice that it has the point zero, zero, but so does the new blue graph. That also has the point zero, zero. And the same is true with nine, zero. They share a point. Um, but if you if I look at this point right here, this is the point 2 comma 4. And this point 2 comma 4 is being stretched to a new point 2 comma 8. So I see that they share the same x coordinate, but I look at the pattern between the y coordinates. I notice that if I take 4 times 2, that gives me 8. Let's look at this from another perspective. Here's the point, this other point on the graph is four comma four. And I can see that this point, four comma four, is also being stretched to a point up here, four comma eight. I also notice that I can see this shape, even though it has the same general shape to it, but it looks like it's been vertically stretched and therefore has gotten a little bit thinner. So I'm very comfortable at this point looking at the change in the y graphs and knowing that a vertical stretch is a multiplier, I can say that this blue graph is going to be 2 times f of x. And when I put 2 times f of x, or I can just write that as 2 f of x, you will see that it takes on the behavior of that blue graph. Okay, let's show you one more vertical stretch which might be a little counterintuitive. It's called a stretch, but it might not look like a stretch. So imagine that we have this. We have this blue graph here, this blue dotted graph, that takes on the shape of the red graph, but it's been not stretched horizontally, but in a way it's been compressed, right? But we can still do this thing with the multipliers. I see that 0, 0 and 9, 0 continue to be a point on this graph, but I have these two other points that I want to consider. How does 2, 4, the point 2, 4 translate, and how does 4, 4 uh, change? Let's take a look at that. So we can see that the point 2, 4 has now become 2, 1. And the point 4, 4 has now become 4, 1. Well, keep in mind that a vertical stretch or a vertical comp compression is going to be a multiplier. So what do I have to multiply 4 by? to get an answer of one. What do I multiply four by to get one? And the answer is gonna be one fourth. So I can write this new function as one fourth f of x. In other words, I'm taking all of the outputs in my original function and I'm compressing them by multiplying them by one fourth of their original value. So this new function here is gonna be one fourth f of x. And I hope that's making sense to you. But if it's not, make sure you ask me some questions on this. There's one more type of translation I would like to work with you on or teach you about, which is a um, transformation that reflects the graph either above about the y-axis or reflects the graph about the x-axis. So let's take a look at this blue graph right here. We can see that the blue graph is a reflection about the x-axis. Right? It's a reflection. So if the x-axis were a mirror, then this blue graph represents the reflection. And we can also see by looking at the points, we can see that the point 2, 4 has now become 2, negative 4. And the point 4, 4 has now become 4, negative 4. So what's actually happening here? Well, what's happening is the y-coordinates or the outputs are being negated. The 4 has become a negative 4. So since I'm negating the outputs, I can negate the entire function f of x. And what I end up getting is that reflection, that reflective gra graph. 
So if I'm reflecting about the x-axis, I can simply negate the entire function and it flips all of these points about the x-axis because the y's become negative. Let's take a look at one more reflection, which is going to be a reflection about the y-axis. Here I have this same graph f of x, but now it's been reflected about this vertical axis right here, the y-axis. So if we look at the points, we can see that the point 2 comma 4 has now become the point negative 2, 4. And the point 4 comma 4 has now become the point negative 4, 4. So what's happening here? Well, what's happening is the x values are, are getting negated. So in my new function, I can simply, instead of negating uh, the, the function itself, I'm going to negate only the x values. So I'm going to put a negative x inside uh, my f notation, and that ends up negating all the x values. And as a result, I get a graph that is reflected about the y-axis. So let's finish up by showing a summary of our vertical stretches and vertical compressions along with the reflections. For vertical stretches, we can say this. If I have this multiplier a in front of the function, then it's going to result in a vertical stretch by a factor of a. So if it's 2 f of x, then it's going to be twice as stretched. If it's 3 f of x, it's going to be three times as stretched. Now, if that a value happens to be between 0 and 1, like we saw in the example 1 fourth, then it's going to be a vertical compression by a factor of a, such as 1 fourth f of x or 1 half f of x. Now, this can't be negative, all right? It has to be between 0 and 1, because if it is negative, then not only does it stretch or compress, but it's going to reflect about the x-axis, because we've just taken all those outputs f of x, the outputs, and we've negated them, all right? So it reflects about the x-axis. And then if I make that x a negative on the inside, that's going to reflect about the y-axis. So there's your summary on reflections.